Hi, if you're someone who struggles with low self-esteem just because you don't have certain things or someone who struggles to fulfill commitment made to the Lord, stay on with me as we discuss a Bible character today who did suffer with low self-worth but made sure to fulfill commitment made to the Lord in our Bible banter today. Welcome to today's Bible banter. Well, I suppose guessing bridges is a bit more difficult than I thought. Last week, I was at Willow Tree Footbridge, which is just across the canal when we walked towards Southall from Greenford. Well, today I'm at a very old and known place, so I suppose it would be easier for a lot of us to know which place this is. Please do let me know in comments below or just drop me a mail as few of us does. Well, our today's Bible character is seen in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and chapter 2. And we are talking about Hannah. Now Hannah was married to Elkanah who also had other wife. Her name was Panina. Panina was blessed with children but Hannah had none. And just because of this she was jealous of Panina. Now when we read her story in Bible we clearly understand that Hannah was jealous. Hannah had a bitter relationship with Panina because she always thought that I am of no worth just because I don't have children. But if you look at the other side, the Bible also talks about that Elkanah loved Hannah more than Panina. Even when every time they went to Jerusalem to offer sacrifice, she always received a double portion than Panina. But all this love that she received from Elkanah didn't really matter to Hannah because she always thought, I don't have a child. And that really made her suffer from low self-worth. Well, this family had a habit of visiting Jerusalem each year, offering sacrifices to the Lord and spending a day in Jerusalem. In one such visit to Jerusalem, Hannah thought, I would spend time in prayer and I would ask God to give me a child. So she went after offering a sacrifice, she went at the temple door and started praying. Bible tells us that she wept, wept, wept and wept. She cried and she prayed. She wept so bitterly that Eli, the high priest of the temple, looked at her and thought that she is drunk. So Eli walked towards her and said to her, please, move from this place. This is not the place where you should come like this. But Hannah told her, I am not drunk as you are thinking, but I am asking my Lord for a child. When Eli heard this, he blessed Hannah, said that God has heard your prayer and he will fulfill your desire to have a child. Well, a year went by and God fulfilled his promise to Hannah. And she was blessed with a child whom she called Samuel. Now as child grew in his early years, there was this one vow that Hannah had made with the Lord when she asked for a child. If you read in 1 Samuel chapter 1, it says, She said to the Lord that I will give this child for your service in the temple. It must have been really difficult for Hannah to see her child growing and then giving that child in the temple. But then we see that she went on to fulfill her promise to the Lord. She took the child and gave it in the care of Eli. And this child of her went on to become one of the great prophets in the history of Israel. Now friends, what do we learn from this? What do we learn from this character of Hannah? One of the most important things that we learn that she knew a right solution for her problems. And that was not keep fighting with Panina. That was not keep nagging her behind her husband, but going and asking the Lord for what she was in need of. So she went and she prayed. 
she went with the faith. Friends, let's, let me ask you this. How many times we ask God with the faith that yes, I will get what I'm asking for? How many times we are assured of this, that God is going to listen to my prayer? Hannah did. Well, there was a problem with Hannah as well. As I said, she suffered with a low self-worth because even when she had all the love of her husband, all the attention, all the respect of her husband, she always was bitter towards Panina. Lastly, she fulfilled her commitment she had made to the Lord. It must have been the most difficult decision for her. But she fulfilled what she had committed to the Lord. Friends, how many times in our life do we fulfill our commitments we make to the Lord? Or, or do we just run away from the commitments that we make? Friends, as we think of this character of Hannah, let us take this lesson that we need to grow in our prayer life as Hannah did. We need to have a strong faith as Hannah did. And we need to fulfill our commitments as Hannah did. Chiva time. Last week I asked two questions. The first question was, how many people led a team of exiles back to Jerusalem? And as I said, Nehemiah was third. Before that it was Ezra and before that it was Zerubbabel. So there were three people who led teams of exile uh, to Jerusalem from, from captives. So it was Zerubbabel, Ezra and Nehemiah. And we find about first two exiles in the book of Ezra and then the third exile is seen in the book of Nehemiah. My second question was, which is the last book historically, chrono chronologically in the Bible? Historically, chronologically, the last book written in the Bible is Malachi. Now, there's not really much difference uh, in terms of time period between Nehemiah and Malachi. But the book of Malachi was written just after the events that took place uh, in Nehemiah, after which it says that 400 years was a period of silence after which we enter into New Jerusalem. Uh, New Testament, sorry. Question for today. How many kings did Samuel anoint? Second question. How many judges led the people of Israel that we find in the book of Judges? I hope these videos are a source of blessing to you. If you are being blessed by any of the videos that we produce, please do let us know in comments below or please do drop us a mail. Well, if there's anything else that you want us to talk about, please also let us know about those things. Have a blessed week and may God be with you.